We are starting with screenwriting, television writing, animation foundations, and 2D advanced animation certificates in the fall, and there'll be more to come each year. Courses are taught online. They have synchronous components where you'll get feedback, build community, and additional instruction. And this time is always going to be between 5.30 and 8.30 central time in the U.S., and it'll be once a week. We are artists in the industry, and um, we teach that way. We've built this program for artists. Once you're accepted into the program, you'll receive details on equipment and software that you, that you might need to um, invest in for yourself. So learning online, um, again, a big part of that is feedback, and um, you'll get honesty. So hopefully you want honest feedback. You'll get um, constructive feedback and you'll get encouragement. Hello, my name is Kristen Brashears. Most people call me Kay. I'm an MFA student and I graduated through the Lipscomb BFA as well. Currently, I am a freelancer, student, student worker, and generalist slash art director for Tom Studios Pencilish. He hired me to be a background artist for one of his series he was making at the time, uh, Bjorn the Last Unicorn. It was my first job. I was so excited. And knowing this was my only opportunity, I gave it everything I had. Luckily, Tom liked me enough to keep me in the studio, and I've been working there ever since. Uh, she has probably done the work of at least three students. Uh, we don't always encourage her to do that. We want her to sleep also. But uh, yeah, John Dixon, thank you. I, you get it. Um, but there isn't a lot, you know, you can go to college. This is a little tip and trick. You can go to college and get a degree and all that and then come out of there and not have grown very much because I do want to suggest to all of you that what you put into it is the hidden factor that nobody talks about. Uh, they always talk about the professors and getting good grades and things like that, but how hard you work and how much you apply yourself is the other half of the equation. I'm the director of the School of Theater and Cinematic Arts here at Lipscomb, and uh, I've also uh, written and uh, co-written and directed uh, two feature films, uh, The Second Chance for Sony and Blue Like Jazz for Roadside Attractions. Um, I talked about this a little bit, but one of the things that is pretty unique about our program is that we like to make things ourselves for the marketplace and uh, produce them under our Imagine House banner, which is kind of our production playground here at Lipscomb. And we've done quite a bit. We uh, had a uh, sports docuseries that was bought by Sinclair Broadcasting called Set Apart. Um, we just wrapped 13 episodes of the new animated series from Mike Naraki, the beloved co-creator of Veggie Tales and voice of Larry the Cucumber. Uh, Mike would have been here with us because he's also on faculty, but he is currently at a book signing event for his book series, which is now an animated series that will be premiering later this year. It's called The Dead Sea Squirrels, and uh, it is uh, a delightful series. Um, it turned out great, and we employed over 100 uh, students to work on The Dead Sea Squirrels. All of them got paid. All of them get uh, IMDb credits. And we're really excited about that. I also uh, produced a movie called Sketch, which should be coming out later this year, starring Tony Hale and Darcy Carden. And um, we're really excited about that. But the one I wanted to tell you about is a project that started when one of our grad students, Sydney Tooley, uh, came to us. And she um, would tell me uh, between classes and after classes, she'd describe the experience that she'd had between college and grad school teaching English up in the mountains of Taiwan. And I thought the stories that she had were really interesting. And so I said, you know, you should take some of those stories and put them into a screenplay format. She did, I thought they were really good. So I helped her develop the project. And then uh, my friend, Rich Peluso, who runs Sony Affirm Films, uh, was looking for some pitches. And I pitched him that project and he gave us $1.3 million to make Sydney's movie, Sun Moon. So um, I'm gonna pitch it to Sydney to tell you a little bit more about her experience as the director and co-writer of a feature film that uh, you can now see uh, on Amazon Prime and a whole bunch of other places. So Sydney, over to you. 
And I think the, the cool thing about being able to go through a writing program like this is like you could go through and do this on your own, read screenplays, do whatever. But I find writing specifically as like an island um, unto yourself and without the feedback from professors and table reads and actually learning how to give and receive feedback, which you do get to do in the classes um, is super important. Uh, the voices that you hear help you really construct a screenplay. Otherwise, you kind of drown in it by yourself. So it's very cool to be able to get that kind of feedback. And um, specifically on Sun Moon, um, that one started out as like 46 pages of a jumble of scenes. Um, and then I spent about two years writing it and then brought on a co-writer to help kind of fix that, which is another cool thing is learning how to collaborate with other writers and how do we work professionally with them. Um, and then uh she got made and it was crazy and now she's everywhere um and then and currently i'm now um in development for my second feature another thing is that we have travel courses and these are built into the program to exercise networking skills build community so some of those travel courses are like the austin screenwriting conference which is a fabulous travel event to go to uh writer's room is in one of the writing certificates in Los Angeles, working with a showrunner and um, the light box event in California that is for animators. And uh, that's something that Tom and Tony go to every year and you can be a part of as well with, with us. And that's where we build community across the um, students who are in the classes. Um, well, hey guys, my name is Jake Morgan. I teach the writing classes here at Lipscomb. I teach TV writing. I teach feature writing. Uh, before I came to Lipscomb, I was working in LA. I worked for companies like Bunny or Die, Sony, Universal Television. Uh, but now that I'm here in Nashville, I'm working as a writer and I get to teach the TV and the feature writing classes. So it's my job to equip students, you know, to have TV sample scripts that they want to go work for a TV show to have features that they could either go produce themselves or sell once they graduate. And the beautiful part about that is it isn't just for live action. I think it applies just as well for animation. So just a, an example of a feature I'm working on right now, my writing partner, he's staffed on Disney's Iron Man show, which is an animated show um, at Disney. So all of these skills translate back and forth. And I'm going to kick it to Dakota, who was one of my feet, uh, past prize students, who created an awesome animated show in one of my TV writing classes. Yeah, I definitely want to start by echoing um, what Sydney said about getting incredible feedback as a writer. Man, um, I can't imagine uh, doing any of this stuff without you guys. But um, so I'm Dakota. I just finished the master's program uh, with an MFA in animation in December um, of 23. Um, so coming fresh off of that, um, I also just rolled off of season two of the wing feather saga. If any of you are familiar with that, um, where I was a production coordinator, um, and because it was a small studio, I got to do a lot of things, um, mainly things that I was equipped for in the program. Um, so back in, uh, the summer of 2021 um i was a uh, graphic designer and illustrator for a tech company and i was doing more motion graphics and i started doing a little bit of cell animation and i felt my heart being drawn to being a full-time storyteller that i wanted to make the leap into what would it look like to go into the animation industry in general and um, wound up getting connected with uh tom and melissa um and joining the program thinking that I was going to be a storyboard artist, actually, um, because I wanted to direct and I had um, a project, one that Jake alluded to that I wanted to work on. And so they said, if you come here, we're, we have all these classes um, that are going to help you put your um, the uh, your story on the train tracks and actually get it going. And so the goal was to walk out with a thesis project that I would be able to pitch um, and something that I really believed in and that whole path, I'd have tons of um, critical feedback and tons of other artists to work on it with me. Um, and so my view started changing on, as opposed to being a storyboard artist, um, learning some other skills and then wanting to pursue, uh, pursue a full on writer, director, producer path. Um, and so most of my classes stacked up, including, um, 2D animation with Tony. Uh, I'd never taken an actual 2D animation class. I just did stuff on YouTube and Skillshare and it was fine, but um, nothing compares to the pressure cooker of 
you know, being with Tony and being like, Hey, you got to do a full walk cycle in the next week. Right. Or, um, taking a class with Tom and doing character design and being like, Hey, you have to do three turnarounds for characters by next week. Right. It's like, you're just not going to get that. No one that I've ever met has that drive. And so to be able to get there and then also have, uh, in all their wisdom, their critical feedback, um, on top of what, what am I missing so that I'm not just siloed off. Um, so I learned so many things to be able to work on my project called Loser You, um, which I was really proud of in the end. I made a full half hour animatic and it's something that they're still helping me um, develop and, and edit down and, and tighten up um, because I've made these connections through being here. Uh, Jake did an incredible job reading all of my horrible first few drafts and giving me really incredible notes. Um, I really can't imagine it, but now um, I'm pursuing other opportunities as a compositor um, as well as a producer and writer, I still want to do something by trade. And part of the things that I picked up on while I was at Lipscomb that contributed to that is well, first off a need, um, developing final look for animation is not something that a lot of people really focus on in school. Um, and while I was there, I also got to produce uh, multiple short films that ended up winning some awards. Um, and I got to composite on both of those. Um, and so kind of producing and compositing went hand in hand because I had some students come to me and say, hey, um, I have all this stuff. I have the story I want to tell. How do I do it? You know, they know how to animate. They know how to paint concept art. They know how to do all these things, but they don't know how to like make a schedule or like be realistic about what it actually takes. Um, and throughout my time with Lipscomb, I took a couple of business classes as well to make sure like, is this realistic, right? Animation is costly in time and money. Um, and so when somebody's like, I'm going to take a year to do this thing, it's like, it's probably going to take three years, actually. Um, and it's going to be a lot more money than you thought. But um, the genius thing about this program, and people like Steve, like Tom, that are making things and saying, like, what would it look like if we partnered with local people? What would it look like um, to get funding for something um, like your project, your feature, like Sydney's, and say, uh, we can get this done in a million dollars, right? And to be able to bring that to life is something, uh, again, I don't think any other program is talking about right now. Um, and so I'm super proud to be a part of that. And um, particularly some of the more impactful things, I went to Lightbox and I went to Awesome Film Fest. And uh, one of my biggest takeaways of both of those, while I was surrounded by people that I cared about, who had read my scripts, um, who had seen my short films, things like that, I was meeting new people and they were starving. They were coming there. They were paying all this money to go to Awesome Film Fest and Lightbox, hoping that they might make the type of friendship and connection that I had with my professors and with my fellow students that were already there with me. Um, so if I could leave you with anything, I'm like, man, to be an artist is to be a, a good collaborator. And I think um, like taking a step toward this program is a huge leap in what could radically change your future um in film and animation so um yeah a, a person particularly who had a huge impact on me um the past couple of years is uh mr tony bancroft as well teaching me directing helping me walk through my thesis um toward the end and i could never repay him for that but i could hand the mic over to him and spotlight him so tony what do you have to say about that i appreciate it dakota thanks for the throw off here um yeah, I'm Tony Bancroft, I'm uh, Animation Program Director at Lipscomb University, undergraduate and for the graduate program. Super excited to be talking about this. And Dakota, Dakota and Kay, the Kristen that you already heard from, they're key examples of the kind of students that we're looking for. They're hardworking, they understand that animation uh, and whether you get into animation or not, it's gonna be a lot of work. There's a lot of things to do. But these days, there's so many different ways you can use these certificates, you can use them to get into illustration, maybe children's book illustration. So many animators do that. You could do comics, you could do comic strips, you could do, um, uh, uh, um, oh gosh, product design or licensing design for parks or big, um, big theme parks or big uh, studios that have licensing design. There's so many different options that you can pivot to within this degree too. It doesn't have to be specific to animation. I can't tell you how many uh, uh, different people come and join us. I have a medical student right now. She's a biology major and she's taking a minor in animation because she wanna learn how to animate some of the graphics of how the heart works so that she can develop uh, heart construction and videos and stuff like that to help explain how that's done for hospitals around the world. 
And uh, so she's using the, the basics of what she's learning and what her main major is in biology and using animation to uh, to help her in her profession. Um, I just love that. I love what we do in animation, but also from a storytelling standpoint, like Tom was talking about, it's so key um, to igniting the passions of people through story. And that's really what we're all about. Yeah, the cost is something that we are uh, keenly aware is a big deal for a lot of people. There may be a few of you who you can do whatever you want. This is you're on. This is a lark. Doesn't matter. But for most of you, the cost is a is a big factor. Uh, the cost for for what we're doing is seven ninety nine per credit hour, and um, we think if you're serious about uh, pursuing animation or screenwriting, that it's a good investment. That um, uh, you can go to another school um, that we don't recommend, but it's called the School of Hard Knocks. And uh, <laughs> that will teach you a lot of things as well, but that might take five or 10 extra years to get through. Um, this way you are able to get through if you're looking for an MFA in, you know, in the course of three stackable certificates. And uh, we think the value proposition is really strong. You're learning from professionals like those that are on this uh, Zoom from our faculty. Um, you're working with a, another group of people of like-minded people who often become your cohort and co-workers um of course you're getting feedback from professionals which is the one of the hardest things to do and get honest feedback and um and then we frankly are always looking for talent uh there's of course um options for completing a, just a certificate or taking it all the way to a master of fine arts some of you may wonder what the benefit of having a master of fine arts is. Uh, I have one myself. And uh, not only do I like to say I'm a master of fine arts, but it's the thing that you need if you ever wanna teach one day in um, in a collegiate setting. So an MFA is a good thing to have in that situation. And if you're a US citizen, of course you can get financial aid to help with the cost of these certificates. Is there a portfolio review? Is there, um, besides paying money, what are the other sort of hurdles? Yes. Uh, Great. And, oh, and having a bachelor's degree. So go ahead. It has the information for the program and you can click on any, you can click on any of the certificates here to find out more information. But let's say we go to Animation Foundations um, you can click on admissions requirements and then portfolio requirements. And this is going to tell you what you need to submit for your portfolio. Was that the question, Tom? Or that was one of them, one of them I, I okay. was asking for people. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the admission requirements are, are on here. Also, um, the courses, the specific courses you'll take. So for animation Foundations, and I think Tony mentioned this, these are the courses that are the 18 hours in that certificate. So you'll complete that certificate. You, you apply for the certificate and to get the certificate, you take the 18 hours. Um, they're, they're not one-off courses. However, if you decide just to take one course, that's obviously up to you. You could, you could do that in a whole MFA program too, if you want, you just drop out. But um, in order to get the certificate, you you complete the 18 hours. Okay, um, for clarity, you're saying you could just take one of those classes or you could take is, the whole certificate. Right, well, that's not how it, what I'm saying is it's not set up where you can just take a course. So yeah, you could take a course, but you can't take a course in animation foundation, say, and then pick a course in 2D animation um got you it's not yeah. a smorgasbord you can't like it's make up your own certificate exactly exactly so um and here are the courses in the um advanced 2d animation we'll have the cg animation up soon um we have the screenwriting so um so yeah you can here's screenwriting a little, TV a little bit yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. And to dig a little bit deeper too, along the lines of just being, you know, asking the questions that people are probably thinking a little bit too. 
when you say um there's a three next to you go to courses there mm -hmm. oh when you go to courses under the screen screenwriting certificate you'll see this yes. there's always six courses and each certificate that make up that certificate and when it says 18 hours if you look at the numbers next to each course this yeah. one includes a, a one those are the hours but they're also um uh are they considered units like in uh, the undergraduate program too? Credits. Yeah, I mean some some yeah credits, credits and unions are, units are the same thing. Just different universities use different terms. And it's so, not to say that these courses are only three hours long. Of course, no, <laughs> so, they're three uh, hours credit. Yes. Right. So each course is about how long in duration? Well, they are three hours in the synchronous. Um, portion of the course so you have it once a week for three hours but then there's other content that is required outside of those three hours where you you're getting video instruction and your assignments to work on and stuff so and also known as homework yes yeah, and, and it, there's homework on top of it too yeah yeah there could be in the way of hours for total Yes. And so, you know, it's graduate, it's graduate school. So the, there, it is, it's not like high school. It's not like undergrad. It is intense. We, you want to, but it's usually because it's something you love, then, then you are, you know, full into it, but it does take a commitment. Um, so the cost I have a of the question. I, I oh, have, sorry. Oh, sorry, I just had a Go question ahead. pop up. It was directed oh, to yeah. me. So um, about the cost of the classes. So it's it's a $7.99 per credit hour. So when you see those credit hours on there, or, you know, if you're, you're going to do a certificate that's 18 hours, it's $7.99 per credit hour. Saying those that are yeah. worried about portfolios, you know, because I think Portfolios are part of the artist's life, part of the, part of the creative's life. It could be a portfolio of your scripts, the work that you've done in the past, of it's script writing you're going into, or or um, a portfolio of your drawings or illustrations if you're getting into animation. And like Tom said, we're not looking for somebody with a lot of experience in animation. We'll teach you that. That's that's what we're here for. That's especially what the animation foundations courses are are good at. Um, but we're looking for potential. That's what a portfolio is all about. Show us your best work. And we don't need to see a lot of images, but oh, do just show us fine. your best work. It's things that you feel proud of yourself that feel really represent where you're at right now. Not a bunch of old stuff either. Make sure it's really relevant and new too, okay? Um, and right. I don't know if this was part of the other question, but um, if you don't have a bachelor's degree in art, that's fine. It, it, your bachelor's degree can be in anything. Um, it's your... Uh, portfolio that matters the most. The difficult thing about what we do in animation oftentimes and why we've um, really haven't had an online course in a long time and why we're just now doing this is that technology is caught up with people being online, online, working at home. It's gotten easier over the years. And so, you know, we've really invested a lot of time into like, how do we keep the cost low, but also you're going to have to have the responsibility of having some of the gear necessary, right? You know, if yeah. you're getting into screenwriting, the software costs a certain amount of money. If you're getting into the animation side or drawing side, but because of, we feel really confident in, in using like iPad Pro, if you have one of those and you install Procreate, you could do all the character design classes, all the drawing classes, just with those assets. If you get, uh, uh Procreate Dreams, which is just came out last Christmas. It's amazing how this is just happening in time for doing these online courses. You can create all your animation digitally and on an iPad with Procreate Dream and keep your costs down with the kind of hardware and software that you need. Now, if you want to or already have a Cintiq or a Sense Labs, uh, you know, tablet or something like that uh, and a, a nice high-end computer and you already have Toon Boom Harmony or TV Paint or something like that. You could definitely use those things. That's gonna that's gonna be there for you. And and yes, that's gonna be great. But we're trying to make it so that this day and age, this time for a time just like this, we are able to finally be able to do a lot of this stuff online because of 
the advances uh, that have just happened recently. And, you know, and it doesn't cost as much to get into animation and design and drawing and writing like it did in, well, Tom's old days anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It's a long time. All ago. right. Oh, yeah. We're, well, I'm, I'm going to um, wrap this up. Um, I appreciate everybody's been on here much longer than you expect it to be. And I, I really appreciate your patience.